Gentlemen, the only question you're going to have at the end of tonight is small, medium, or large. I was going easy on you. Got you back. Hmm. So it was the night before Rosh Hashanah. I was parked right in front of the Central Avenue P in Ocean Parkway. The night before Rosh Hashanah. I came out right after our beat. I already gave that night two classes in two different shuls. I got into the car. I'm on my way, about to leave, going back to Lakewood. And Rico comes running out. You guys know Rico. He's the guy from the CDs, from the community. CDs. Wow, Rabbi, what planet do you come from? <laughs> CDs. What did you went to? We went to, we went to high school at Abraham Lincoln. See these? Yeah, yeah. See, there was these funny circle things, you know. And it had like a, it was like a donut. And he came out that night. He was holding about 300 CDs. And he knocked on my window right before I was about to leave. And he says to me, uh, Rabbi, you're going back to Lakewood. Take these 300 CDs. These are your classes over the last few years. And now, I said it in Meir Teshuvah, people like listening to classes, take it to Lakewood and put it out in different shuls. I said, oh, that's very nice of you, thank you. So he puts the CDs on the passenger side of the front of the car, and I drive out, and I'm on my way. The Belt, Verrazano, Stan Hall Expressway, finally making my way to the Garden State Parkway. And I'll tell you honestly, gentlemen, from that whole night, I have only one memory besides those CDs. One memory. The whole night, in my mind, is a chesed of Hashem, erased. Save one. I remember a police officer sticking his head through the driver's side window, looking me dead in the eye and saying, you're alive? And me looking back at him and saying, yeah, why? I didn't even know what happened. Do you understand the chesed Hashem? Do you understand the trauma he saved me? Do you understand how he saved Kal Atzmotai Tomarna Hashem? Mi Chamocha, Kal Atzmotai. No, not just the fingers, not just the... Call every bone in my body screams. There's no one like you, Hashem. There's no one like you. Because that night I found out that as the car made its way onto the Garden State Parkway at 82 miles an hour, according to the police report, the car veered off right at the spot where the express and the local divides. And it made its way somehow or other down to the middle area where there was all grass. And the car continued on that middle area, hit one tree, hit a second tree, hit a third tree, and then hit a six foot retention wall at 82 miles an hour, and the car flipped over the retention wall and fell 104 feet down underneath the Garden State Parkway, landing on Washington Avenue in Sayreville, New Jersey, and the car kept going. Now, they don't make Toyota Camrys anymore like this baby. You couldn't stop this baby for nothing. It kept going up the road until it wrapped itself around the pole, and there was nothing left of the car. It was what they call, in insurance language, a complete loss. Now, now, how do I know the detail? You see, the next day, I'm in Robert Wood Johnson's hospital, Sayreville, New Jersey, and my brother, Rabbi Avi, comes to visit me. He actually did me a tremendous favor. He went to the pound. That, that's an old word for the junkyard. He went to the junkyard. I have to uh, touch the words. He went to the junkyard. And he meets the tow truck guy, and he says to the tow truck guy, hey, I'm looking for the guy that had that bad accident on Garden State Parkway, the great Toyota Camry. And he says to him, oh, you related to him? And Avi says, yeah, he's my brother. He says, my condolences. He says, what do you mean my condolences? He's alive. Tow truck guy says, what? What are you talking about? He's not alive. There's no way that anybody can survive that accident. He was going 80 miles an hour. He dropped 100 feet. There's nothing left of the car. Come, I'm going to show you the car. The front of the car came all the way back to the windshield. The back of the car came all the way up to the driver's seat. It was, a, it was an accordion with only a driver's seat and a passenger seat left and broken glass. And that's it. That's it. Avi told me, he says, Duvi, you don't understand. When I walked up to the car, there was legit nothing left 
There was just a driver and passenger seat. And when I cranked open that door, just to get you to Philippe, to get your Koracha from the inside of the car, to be able to bring it to you. I said, what, what did you have on the inside of the car that night? There were these sparkly little things all over the passenger seat. It looked like little diamonds everywhere, pixie dust everywhere. He said, what was that? And I'm thinking, what? And then it hit me, the 300 CDs that Rico gave me the night before, put it on the passenger seat, taking it to Lakewood for people to listen to, 300 classes of previous years. I said, oh, those were the CDs, the classes. He says, yeah, but when they took the drop, the accident smashed the CDs to smithereens. There's nothing left of them except for one CD. And he sticks his hand in the bag with my coracha, and he pulls out a CD that was unscratched and untouched, one Pach Shemin. And he hands it to me, and I look at it, and I see the title on the CD. Where is your spiritual bulletproof vest? Where's your tzitzit? Abba, you threw me off the Garden State Parkway that night at 80 miles an hour, and you caught me in a pair of tzitzit. I walked out the next morning with a sprained thumb. Not broken. Not broken. Sprained thumb. The tow truck driver told my brother Rabbi Avi, at the time of the accident, when the cops pulled up, they didn't call the ambulance. They said, there's nothing to call. This is only about paperwork. There's nothing left. They didn't call the, you hear that? They didn't call the ambulance. It was 20 minutes later that a lady from Sayreville, a volunteer, she gives a scream, says the tow truck guy. Hey, there's movement in the car. The guy might be alive. It was just then that the cop ran over to the driver's side and he broke the driver's side window and he stuck his head inside the window. And there it is. That was my one memory of the night. He sticks his head in and looks at me eye to eye and he says to me, you're alive? I said, yeah, why? I didn't know there was an accident. Because Abba held me every moment. From the moment of the break, to the moment of the hit, to the moment of the fall, to the moment of the smash. I was wrapped in the arms of Torah and mitzvot, and I was untouchable. Do you want to understand what untouchable means? There was a lady in the next bed, in the same room as me, with a curtain between me and her. She was on the other side of the curtain. We shared a room, an Indian lady. She had the red dot, Indian lady, right on the other side. And the doctor comes in, and the doctor's talking to her husband, and this is what I hear. The doctor says, I'm so sorry. The operation was not a success. And even though we use three or four bolts and a metal plate, your wife's leg still will not hold her. It shattered. I'm sorry. She's not going to be able to walk. Maybe there might be a 10% chance. We might be able to operate again. Maybe, maybe she might be able to walk with some help. And with those words, the doctor walks out, and the husband is trying to console the wife that's crying. And I turned to the husband and I said, oh my gosh, I feel so terrible. Shh, shh. Your wife probably was in a terrible accident just like me, right? And he says, well, it wasn't a car accident. I said, well, what type of accident was she in? No, she was in a different type of accident. I said, really, what type of accident? She, uh, she woke up two mornings ago. And she got out of bed in a funny way, and she slipped and fell off the bed. And she landed on the floor and shattered her leg. I said, what? What did you say, Willis? Say that again? What, what was that? He said, no, yeah, you heard me. She fell off the bed onto the floor, and she shattered her leg. This lady fell a foot and a half at zero miles an hour. And she needs bolts and screws and a metal plate. And even that was not able to get her to walk again. And I said, Yishtabach Shemol La'ad Abba, at 82 miles an hour, a 100 foot drop off the Garden State Parkway. And I walked out with a sprained thumb. 
Look at my legs. I can still dance like a beast. You didn't see me by those weddings, did you? Especially when they tried to move the mechitza. Woo! Did they find out who's dancing? Gentlemen, listen to me well. It's very simple. It's small, medium, large, or extra large. I got you this time, baby. But at the end of the day, you need to know something. The Vilna Gaon writes, how precious a pirat seat. Every step that we walk wearing a pirat seat is another mitzvah. You know, you want to hear something cute? Harav, I didn't even see you. Come up to, you, to, to the top, what was it? Huh? <laughs> what are you doing? Wow, I didn't know, okay. Don't worry, I'm closing now. The Vilna Gaon, every step you take with a period it's a mitzvah. One time my wife decided, she's taking me to Weight Watchers. So it was me, my wife, and everyone else from the community over the age of 65, in this room, telling stories about the difficulties of chocolate cake. It was, it was a session. And at the end, the lady tells us about the app. Now listen to this, this is beautiful. At that time, Weight Watchers came out with this magnificent invention. It's an app. It tells you at the end of the day how many steps you took. Okay, guys, here we go. Time for a little interaction. Give me a number, what do you think? How many steps a day do you think the normal guy takes on an average day? Go ahead, throw them at me. How was that, 2,000? I heard 10,000, we're getting warm. 6,000, okay. All right, anybody else? Survey says, anybody else? What was that? I heard 15. So take a look at this. Weight Watchers made a study, and I actually realized this because my wife has it on her phone. Let me underline her phone. Did I say her phone? You see, we're still going with the dinosaurs. Okay. Yeah, uh, so, that, you know, this is, but on her phone, on her phone, she has the Weight Watcher app. It's an average of between 12 to 14,000 steps a day. If the Gaon just told me that every step I take wearing a pair of tzitzit is a mitzvah, I put on the tzitzit in the morning like an undershirt and I forget about it. And then I stop my day. Did you ever hear about passive income? Like a candy machine. Maybe a slot machine in this case. Every step you take with the tzitzit on, cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. Could you imagine that? And every step you take, at the end of the day, look at that app, 12,000 steps, 12,000 mitzvot. According to the Gaon, thanks to the periods you see that I'm wearing, and I didn't even realize on a $10 investment, which tonight is for free, take two. Like this, you'll have one to wash, so that when the other one's in the wash, you'll have this one to switch off on. So let's make, the, let's make a quick one here. 12,000 steps a day, 12,000 mitzvot, when you did something as simple as putting it on in the morning and forgetting about it. At the end of the day, you accumulated 12,000 mitzvot, seven days a week. All right, where's my mathematicians? Here we go. Seven times 12,000, what do we got? Beautiful. Now let's times that by four. What do I got in a month? Beautiful. Now, 336, is that a real number? Okay, beautiful. Three, oh! Good for you. So I got, I, got, I got a month. How many mitzvot a month? 336,000 mitzvot in one month. Now, I want to times that by 12. What's that? Four million. Four million mitzvot. No, no, I... But you thought I was just announcing the New York lottery number for the, no, no. Now, gentlemen, I'm talking about your mitzvah, gentlemen. I'm talking about the lottery you just won when you put on a pyrrhic seat in the morning without even thinking. Four million mitzvah were just put into your bank account in heaven because you wore a pyrrhic seat for one year. 10 years? 20 years? Do you understand where I'm going with this? And what does it ask? Millions of mitzvot without even thinking 
a spiritual bulletproof vest that protects you on every step of the way. The Gemara that told us, Bishat Ritcha, at the time of anger, the first thing that they look when they judge you, is he or isn't he wearing a parity seat? Is he walking around with that spiritual bulletproof protection? Because if he does, we got him. How could we afford not to wear a parent seat seat? So as I opened up tonight's Didasha, when you make your way out of this magnificent shul, look up the box and make that wonderful decision. Small, medium, or large. Thank you for listening.